Hey, this is Eric Capuano with Recon InfoSec. Taking a quick look at one of our really popular and, and uh, powerful features in Greylog, which essentially allows us to take a quick look at statistical values around a particular field and its contents. This is really useful for a few different uh, techniques. Uh, probably one of the first and most useful things that quick values will come in handy for is getting a brief understanding of what data you have at your fingertips especially if you're just now sitting down in front of a log aggregation solution that you're not intimately familiar with. One of the first questions that you want to answer is which systems are shipping logs and which logs are being shipped, right? So quick values is a really helpful uh, way to answer those questions. And I'll give you a few, uh, few examples here. <clears throat> so here we are taking a look at a uh, gray log instance inside of our network defense range. As you can see, I've got my time filter set here to the last one day. In the last one day, we've got just under 7 million events here inside of uh, the last 24 hours. So obviously that's a lot of data. I'm not gonna go poking through this manually one by one, um, but it would be helpful to know what systems have shipped these 6.8 million logs. So one of the first things that I'll do is, here on the left-hand side, you can see all of the fields that are contained in the current view of uh, events that have come back. So what I'll do is I'll search for a field called source. You'll also notice that source is one of, the, one of the fields that's by default shown here in the summary. So I can see that of all these messages that I'm looking at on my screen, the source for those messages is opensocio moloch 2 But what I wanna do is I wanna see what other sources are out there, what other data sources are shipping to this Greylog instance. So I've searched for the source field here in the uh, quick search. And then there it is, there's the source field. I'm gonna hit this little drop down, drop down arrow right here and I'm gonna say quick values. So what it's going to do is across the current search period, which is one day, it ran quick values against the source field to show me first and foremost, the top five values that are returned, but I can scroll down and I can see all of the values that came back as well as their ratio of how many of these events were connected to that source. So right off the bat, I can get a pretty quick idea of the last 24 hours worth of log sources. So that's super helpful in just maintaining and, and gaining a situational awareness about the data that's at my fingertips right now. Now, of course, this requires a little bit of familiarity with the environment to understand what some of these sources are, right? I could probably deduce that FW is likely firewall. Maybe DC could be a domain controller, but this is something that you're gonna need some sort of network diagram or a list of uh, assets in order to understand and correlate um, what's what here. So another really helpful thing to look at is not only which systems are shipping logs, but which log types are being shipped. So there's a few different ways to go about that, especially depending on how your events are being normalized. Uh, one of the really useful fields that we parse out um, is one called event type. So what I'll do is I'll run quick values here on event type just to get an understanding of which types of events um, are being parsed out. So as you can see in the results here, Zeek, Sysmon, win event log, and we've got some IDS logs as well. You notice Sysmon makes up quite a bit of the, uh, the prevalence of logs that are shipping to this instance. For those of you that are familiar with Sysmon, um, you know that those are very, very valuable logs for uh, DFIR and uh, continuous monitoring efforts. But of course, we'd expect to see a high number of Windows event logs, but this is great that we have Zeek as well. So Zeek, formerly known as Bro, provides some NetFlow, a little bit of IDS-like capability, and then we have raw IDS, which in this case is uh, Suricata events. So that's super helpful as well. But let's zero in on a particular log type. Let's say, um, Let's say we're gonna look for sysmon logs and win event logs. Now you notice what I've done. This is another really powerful feature of quick values is over here on the right hand side, you notice I have these little magnifying glasses here. So by clicking any one of these, it's going to add that value to my search bar as you've seen it do up here. Right Now, what I wanna do though is I'm gonna switch that Boolean operator, this AND operator, I'm gonna switch that to an OR because I wanna see either of those results. All right, so now that I have run a query for only event type sysmon or event type win event log, of course I would expect the quick values here to reflect only those two event types. 
So I'll dismiss this quick values here. But let's take a look at now another really useful quick values that we might want to take a look at. And there it is right here at the top of my list, event ID. Now this would be a good way to understand the prevalence of any particular event ID that's coming from these systems. So I'll run quick values here on event ID, and there we are. Now, right off the bat, I'm not surprised to see that the most prevalent event ID is event ID 3. Uh, that's actually our Sysmon event ID for network traffic, network connection. So it's very, very noisy, a very verbose log, extremely helpful because it's one of the few ways that we can actually connect network activity to an actual process. So that's a, a very useful network uh, event log. But you can see a few others in here that stand out, 4688, that's uh, process creation, and the, the corresponding Sysmon event for that, Sysmon uh, event ID 1 for process creation, and several other really uh, common and popular event IDs in here. But this is really just a quick way to give you some situational awareness. What events are being shipped? What could these events possibly tell me? And, um, and that could be very helpful. Now, another really useful uh, field that I can extract out is this event task description field. But I want to show you a trick here instead because what that event task description field is going to show us is a short description of what that event is. So you notice what I've done here is I've checked this box next to event task description. And I'll show you that up close here. So I've checked that box and what that, what that did was it added that field to my summary view. So now as I'm scrolling through all my events, I can very quickly see the value of that field without having to expand that event. So I'm also gonna add the event ID. So you notice now as I scroll through here, you can see that the event ID three corresponds to this event task description, a network connection was detected. So that's just another thing that I could simply run quick values on instead of event ID, maybe on the more friendly event task description to, uh, to understand a little bit better about what those events are. So that's kind of a, a useful way to go about it as well. Now, this is where things get a little interesting. So let's say I was looking at those quick values for event ID, and I don't immediately know what do these event IDs tell me? What, what do these event IDs mean? Well, in this context, what I can do is, right here in the Customize tab, I can go here to Configuration, and you notice here, it allows me to add stacked fields. So we're currently looking at event IDs, but what I want to see alongside my event ID is the event task description, just like we were looking at a moment ago. But now by adding that to my stacked field, it's gonna allow me to see that alongside the event ID. So now what I'm looking at are quick values for the event ID as well as the event task description concatenated. So this is a little bit easier to follow, right? I can now see that an event ID 3 is a network connection detected. So again, just another way to look at this data in a more uh, analyst-friendly uh, sort of lens.